Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to today's Friday Reflections. On this Friday, the 22nd of July, 2022. I hope everybody is well, wherever you are tuning into this from. And uh, having a good day and looking forward to the weekend. Today, I would like to read to you from more from this book, uh, the Book of Knowledge. It's part of the Ihya Ulama Deen by Imam Al-Ghazali, um, a great scholar to which I don't think any Muslims would need any introduction. Um, and I'm going to read from page 10, where I left off a few weeks ago after reading some of this same book. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. On the excellence of learning. The excellence of learning is attested in the Quran by the following words of God. And if a party of every band of them march not out, it is that they may instruct themselves in their religion. And again, ask of those who have books of mun munition, if ye know it not, i.e., you know, people of learning. As to the evidence of the excellence of learning in tradition, the prophets of God said, whoever follows a path in search of knowledge, God will guide him unto a path leading into paradise. Whoever follows a path in search of knowledge, God will guide him into a path leading into paradise. So the path in search of knowledge, it leads to heaven. This is something the Prophet Islam said in Hadith. I've seen a Muslim and also Ibn Majah. And again, verily, the angels will bow low to the seeker after knowledge in approval of what he does. He also said to rise up before daybreak and learn, but a section of knowledge is better than prostrating yourself in prayer a hundred times. So, you know, here the Prophet Islam is saying that if you rise up at Fajr time and then spend some of that time to learn, it's better than if you prayed a hundred prayers. The apostle again said, one section of knowledge which a man learns is better for him than all of the riches of the world. And again, seeking after knowledge is an ordinance obligatory upon every Muslim. So two more things there. One, a portion of knowledge that you've learned is more valuable than all of the wealth of the world. More valuable than all of the wealth of the world. Well, how much value do people put on wealth? And the other point, that seeking after knowledge is a duty, a religious duty upon every Muslim. People talk about fulfilling your religion and obviously praying and fasting during Ramadan and marriage is half of your religion. People talk about these things and going on Hajj, if you can, or Umrah. And yet, Prophet Islam is reminding here that gaining knowledge is a religious duty upon every Muslim, gaining knowledge. How many people value that these days? But this part of our deen, the very central part of our deen, even the very fact that the very first revelation to the Prophet Muhammad was Ikra, and taught through the use of the pen that which mankind did not know. Such a focus on learning within Islam. Prophet Islam also said, seek ye knowledge even as far as China. 
The prophet further said, knowledge is like sealed treasure houses, the keys of which are inquiry. Inquire therefore, for therein lies reward for the inquirer, the learned, the auditor, and their admirer. Knowledge is like a sealed treasure house, or like sealed treasure houses, the keys of which are inquiry. Inquire, therefore, for therein lies reward for four, four things, the inquirer, the learned, the auditor, and their admirer, and four different types of people. Prophet Sosam also said, the ignorant one should not hide his ignorance, nor the learned his knowledge. And in a tradition on the authority of Abu Da, to be present in the circle of a learned man is better than prostrating oneself in prayer a thousand times, or visiting a thousand sick people, or witnessing a thousand funerals. Just being present in the circle of a learned person. It was then said, O Apostle of God, is it also better than the reading of the Quran? To which he replied, What good though is the Quran except through knowledge? SubhanAllah. The Prophet Islam said, What good though is the Quran except through knowledge? Seriously? <laughs> Do Muslims not read this? This is Ihya Ulama Deen of Imam Ghazali quoting the Prophet Muhammad Islam, saying, What good though is the Quran except through knowledge? And in response to a question, is learning knowledge better than the reading of the Quran? Today, how many Muslims are there in this world? How many? Millions of Muslims who are reciting the Quran in Arabic and don't understand what they're reading. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu himself said, what good though is the Quran except through knowledge? And instead of putting the emphasis on learning, becoming knowledgeable people, which is the real meaning of ulama, it means people who are knowledgeable. Like today's academics, people who actually possess knowledge. Not just people who can recite books in a language they don't understand. And I'm not in any way disparaging Arabic or the recitation of the Quran. But this is what the Prophet Muhammad is saying. What good though is the Quran except through knowledge? Something I've been pointing out for years, that you have to understand what the book says. The Quran exists as a book of guidance. That is its primary purpose. If we do not understand what the Quran is telling us, how can we live it? How can we implement it? We can only do that if we understand the Quran. And how can you understand the Quran if you have no education? And education covers many things. As those of you who are watching me on Facebook and the recording later on YouTube, you can see I've put one of the images from the James Webb Space Telescope behind me as my background. This is the, the Space Telescope itself is technology, very advanced technology. This has been developed through scientific knowledge. And now is helping to unravel some of the deepest secrets of the universe. Wallahi, these people at NASA who developed this telescope and are now using this telescope are actually implementing 
the Prophet Muhammad's guidance on gaining knowledge. Even if they didn't get that advice from the Prophet Muhammad himself. But they are putting it more into practice than a large section of today's Muslim communities around the world. And who knows, maybe from these images from the James Webb Space Telescope, someone will discover something that will actually help us to understand an ayah of the Quran better than we currently do. Because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said in his last sermon to take his words onto future generations, that maybe someone from them will understand better than the people who were directly listening to him. Wallahi, look it up, it's in his last sermon. What did he mean by that? The Prophet also said, whoever is overtaken by death while seeking knowledge wherewith to strengthen Islam between him and the prophets in paradise is but one grave. SubhanAllah, if you die while seeking knowledge that will strengthen Islam, between that person and the prophets is just one grade of difference. In other words, they are very close to the prophets. Ooh, this is why in the past, Muslim ulama put so much emphasis on learning and gaining knowledge. My first sheikh did the same. He said to always keep learning and to spend time in, this, in a company of learned speakers to learn what I could and to use it to benefit the community. These were some of Sufi Abdullah's advice to me. And I asked him, does that mean like religious knowledge? He says any kind of knowledge. He says it doesn't have to be Islamic knowledge necessarily is any kind of knowledge, anything that could be used beneficially. I'll continue. As to the evidence of the excellence of learning in the sayings of the companions, Ibn Abbas said, while I sought knowledge, I was abased. But when I was sought for it, I was exalted. Similarly, Ibn Abi Muleka said, never have I seen the like of Ibn Abbas. To behold him is to behold the most handsome man. When he speaks, he is the most eloquent. And when he hands down a judicial opinion, he reveals himself as the most learned. Ibn al-Mubarak said, I wonder how one who sought no knowledge could be moved to any noble deeds. So a connection here being made between a person who has knowledge and a person who has the desire to learn knowledge and noble deeds. That Ibn al-Mubarak said he didn't see how someone who wasn't moved to that could perform any noble deed. Well, one of the wise men said, Verily, I pity no one as I pity the man who seeks knowledge but understands not, and him who understands and seeks it not. Abu al Dada said, I would rather learn one point and spend my night in continual prayer. Quite, he'd rather learn even just one point of knowledge. And again, the learned and the learner are partners in righteousness, while the rest of men are barbarians in whom there is no good. 
He also said, be learned or a learner or an auditor, but never anything else, lest you perish. Atta said, attendance at an assembly of learning atones the evil of attending 70 places of entertainment. Attendance at an assembly of learning. So attending a lecture or some of the, you know, educational talk, that kind of gathering, it makes up for 70 places of entertainment. I mean, there's halal entertainment, but maybe they're not really meaning that here. Sinful entertainment. Because that's what they're alluding to. Umar said, the death of a thousand worshippers who spend their days in fasting and their nights in continual prayer is a lesser calamity than the passing away of one learned man who is aware of what is lawful before God and what is unlawful. Al-Shafi said, seeking knowledge is better than subrogatory works. So seeking knowledge is better than the optional religious activities. Ibn Abdul Hakim said, I was once at Malik's place studying at his feet when the hour of noon arrived. Thereupon I closed my books and put them away in order to pray. But he said, what have you risen to perform is not better than what you are doing, provided your intentions are good. Subhanallah. Abu Adada said, whoever should regard that rising early for study is not jihad, reveals himself deficient in learning and intellect. Whoever should regard that rising early for study is art. Whoever should regard that rising early for study is not jihad, reveals himself deficient in learning and intellect. Now, think about that. Within recent decades, you've had these idiots talking about jihad on the battlefield, which is a lesser jihad even when it's done properly. And they certainly weren't. They were a bunch of terrorists. But jihad means uh, struggle. And in the context of Islam, a struggle that is uh, full of blessings, something which is a great struggle within the religion. And Abu Adada is saying here that if someone does not regard rising early in the morning for study, as a jihad, they reveal themselves as deficient in reasoning and intellect. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. On the excellence of teaching. The excellence of teaching is supported in the Quran by the following words of God. And may warn their people when they come back to them, happily they may take heed to themselves, by which is meant teaching and guidance. God also said, moreover, that when God entered into a covenant with those to whom the scriptures had been given and said, ye shall surely make it known to mankind and not hide it. Meaning there, thereby that teaching was incumbent upon them. And again, he said, but truly some of them do conceal the truth, though acquainted with it. Here God ruled against concealing the truth as he has with regard to concealing evidence when he said, he who refuses to give evidence is surely wicked at heart. 
The Prophet Islam, said, God does not give the learned any knowledge unless he enters with them into the same covenant he has entered into with the prophets. Namely, to make it known and not to conceal it. God also said, and who speaketh fairer, who, who speaketh fairer than he who bideth to God, biddeth to God, and doeth that, the thing that is right, and again, summon you the way of your Lord, summon you to the way of your Lord with wisdom and kindly warning, and also to teach them the book the wisdom. Wow. So Allah is saying in the Quran that he doesn't give knowledge to anybody except that he has entered into a covenant with that person that is similar to the covenant with which he's, give, he's entered into the prophets with. Which means that those people have been given knowledge so that they can teach other people and benefit humanity. And the teaching then becomes an obligation upon them because of the knowledge which Allah has given them. And however we learn knowledge, then, you know. So it's a very high, it's a, it's a responsibility, but it's also a very high honor that Allah has entrusted you with that knowledge. So surely that's something you would want, you'd want to strive after. How much barakah is in that? And when you have been given knowledge, you have a duty to share it. And you shouldn't conceal it because Allah is comparing the concealing of knowledge to the concealing of evidence. Are you when a crime has been committed? Now, such is the emphasis in the Quran on learning and on teaching. And also to summon to the way of your Lord with wisdom and kindly warning. Teach them the book and wisdom. There's a lot of emphasis in the Quran on teaching. And of course, teaching is the product of learning. You have to have you have to have learned yourself in order to be able to teach anything that is of any value. As to the evidence of the excellence of teaching in tradition, the apostle of God, on sending Muad to a Yaman, said to them, said to him, that through you, God may lead one man unto himself is better for you than the world and all that is in it. He also said, whoever acquires but one section of knowledge in order to teach people will be given the reward of 70 of the righteous. Jesus said, he who has knowledge and shall do and teach, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The Prophet Sallallahu said, when on the day of resurrection, God says unto the worshippers and the warriors, enter you into paradise. The learned would say, by virtue of our learning, have they attained, have they attained their piety and fought for you? Then God would say unto them, I regard you alike with my angels, intercede, and you will have your intercessions accepted. 
they then would present their intercessions and enter into paradise. This cannot result except from knowledge, which is made active through teaching, and not from passive knowledge, which is inert. I, you know, if, you, if you've learned knowledge and you teach other people, you've benefited other people. Whereas you can gain knowledge and just sit on it, and that's inert knowledge. It doesn't do anything. So there's a strong emphasis here within Islam on the gaining of knowledge and the teaching of knowledge. Because the intention is to create a knowledgeable society from which everyone can benefit. Because every, every good thing comes from knowledge. You know, every improvement to society, every improvement to people's personal lives or to communities or to anything that's in society, it's come from knowledge. Even as simple as the grinding of wheat grains into flour. It's knowledge. You have to have the knowledge to be able to do that, to even think that that, that wheat that just looks like a grass is actually food. Today we take that for granted, but you know, there, there's other examples as well. And obviously food production has, you know, made leaps and bounds and, you know, food preservation. So many technologies which have benefited people. It's all come from knowledge. And also, when some people might say, well, not all technologies are being good, and that's true, sometimes they're not, but that also comes from knowledge to be able to discern what's what. And whether an innovation is a good one or a bad one, like an innovation in food production or in packaging, or whether that packaging contains something that might be toxic or not. You have to do research, you have to study it. And then you can make changes or, you know, approach other people and encourage them to make the changes. It all comes from knowledge. It's all built upon a framework of knowledge. People who don't have knowledge can't do anything about any of it. The Prophet Sallallahu said, God does not take away knowledge from men after he has given it to them. Rather, it vanishes with the passing away of the land. Thus, whenever a learned man passes away, whatever knowledge he had perishes with him. So, you know, it's um, the prophet said that Allah isn't taking away knowledge from people after he's given it to them. But when those people die, that knowledge disappears. Which also means that we should learn from the people who have knowledge while they're here. And, you know, don't waste that. Otherwise, it disappears and it's gone. And society will be much the poorer for it. We should never take away, we should never take um, for granted knowledgeable people. When finally there are none left but ignorant leaders, they will give uninformed opinions whenever consulted, leading men astray and confusing themselves. The Prophet so Islam, said, whoever has any knowledge but conceals it, will on the day of resurrection be bridled with a bit of fire. He also said, how excellent a gift and how admirable a present is a word of wisdom which you hear and inwardly digest and then carry it and teach it to a brother Muslim. Verily, it is equivalent to a year of worship. And again, accursed is the world and all that is in it, except the name of the exalted God and him who shall follow in his way, be it a teacher or one taught. The Prophet Islam also said 
In truth, God and his angels, as well as the heavens and the earth, even the ant in its hill and the whale in the sea, will bless the man who teaches his fellow men. He also said, a Muslim gives his brother Muslim no better benefit than a fair tradition, which had reached him and which he consequently imparts, i.e. if a person has uh, learned a good hadith and then passes it on. He also said, a good word is better. So a good word which the believer hears and follows and teaches is better for him than a year's worship. A year's worship, teaching someone one thing that is genuine and is good knowledge, is better than a year of worship. SubhanAllah. One day the apostle of God passed by two assembled groups. The members of the first were calling upon God and offering their supplications while the others were instructing men. Whereupon he said, these beseech God. If he wills, he will grant them their request. And if he wills, he will withhold it. Whereas those teach men. And verily, I was not sent, but as a teacher. Then he turned and sat among them. He also said, the knowledge and guidance which God has sent me to declare are like unto heavy rains which fell over a certain locality. One spot absorbed the rain and put forth herbs and much grass. Another spot held the waters which, with which God benefited men who drank therefrom, watered the earth therewith, and then planted it. And the third spot, spot was flat. It held no water and put forth no herb. The first part of the parable signifies the one who reaps the benefits of his own knowledge. The second signifies the one whose knowledge is of benefit to others, while the third stands for him who enjoys neither. Muhammad Sostam also said, when a man dies, all except three of his works perish, namely a permanent endowment for charity, useful knowledge and righteous progeny that bring honor upon his memory. And again, he who leads to something good is like him who does it. He further said, envy is unlawful except regarding two categories of person. Those to whom God has given wealth and power to spend that wealth right, rightly. And those to whom God has given wisdom with which they regulate their lives and which they teach. The prophet so Islam said, God's mercy is upon my successors. And being asked, but who are your successors? He replied, my successors are those who keep my laws and teach them to God's people. As to the evidence of the excellence of teaching in the sayings of the companions, Umar said, whoever shall relate a tradition and thus introduce, induce someone to do according to its precepts, you know, to teach um, a hadith, and uh, encourage someone to follow it with the actual will be so the actual so the person who teaches and the actual doer will be equally rewarded ibn abbas said all things even the whale and the sea will intercede for him who teaches men good one of the learned men said the learned man occupies the the learned man occupies the position of an intermediary between god and his creatures let the learned therefore be mindful how he occupies this position it has been related 
the Sufyan Althari arrived in Ascalon, where he tarried, but no man questioned him or sought his knowledge. Whereupon he said, hire for me a beast of burden in order to depart from this city, for it is a place where knowledge does not prosper. He had not said this except in solitude, solicitude over the excellence of teaching in which lies the preservation of knowledge. Aat also said, I came upon Sayyid Ibn al Musayyid while he was weeping, at which I said, What causes you to weep? He answered, No one seeks from me any information. It has also been said that the learned men are the lights of the ages, each is the torch of his own age, and through him his contemporaries obtain light. Al-Hassan said, had it not been for the learned, men would have become like animals. For it is through teaching and instruction that men are brought out of the category of beasts to that of human beings. In other words, the main thing that marks us as different from the animals is our knowledge and obviously how we act upon our knowledge. When asked what it was, he replied, it is to be given to him who can keep it well and not lose it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Ikrami said, verily a price is set upon this knowledge. When he asked what it is, he replied, it is to be given to him who can keep it well and not lose it. Yahya ibn Amuad said, the learned have more compassion for the followers of Muhammad than either their fathers or mothers. How is that? He was asked. To which he replied, their fathers and mothers shield them from the fires of this world, while the learned protect them against the fires of the next. It has been said that in the process of learning, the first step is silence, followed by listening then retention, then doing, and finally impairing. It has also been said, teach what you know to him who does not know, and learn from him who knows what you do not know. If you would do this, you would learn that you have not known, and would retain that which you have already known. Mu'ad ibn Jabal said, I have come across the same saying described as a Maju tradition. Acquire knowledge for its acquisition, for its acquisition is acquisition to the fear of God. Its pursuit is the equivalent to worship. Its study is equivalent to praise. Searching for it is equivalent to jihad. Teaching it to him who does not know is equivalent to almsgiving. And imparting it to those who are worthy is meritous. For therefore, it is the bosom friend of the lonesome, the companion in solitude, the guide to religion, the comforter in both happiness and misfortune, the aid to the lonely, the relative among strangers, and the beacon on the road to paradise. Through it, God exalts a few and makes them leaders in virtues, chiefs and counselors worthy of emulation, pioneers in righteousness whose footsteps should be followed and whose deeds should be observed. The angels seek their friendship and with their wings teach them to gain their favor. The living and the dead, yea, even the whales and the fish of the sea, the lions and beasts of the field, as well as the heaven and the stars intercede for them. Because knowledge is the protection of hearts against blindness. 
the light of the eye is in darkness and the fortification of the body against decay. Through it, man attains the dignity of sainthood and the loftiest ranks. To reflect upon it as meritorious is as fasting and his study as continual prayer. Through it, God is obeyed, worshipped and glorified. Through it, he admonishes and forewarns. Through it, his unity is declared. And through it also, man abstains from sin. Through knowledge, the lies of relationship are made close by kindly deeds. And the lawful and unlawful are made known. Knowledge is like an imam, whereas works are its followers. Knowledge is bestowed upon the fortunate and from the unfortunate withheld. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. I've just been reading from Imam Al-Ghazali's Ihya Ulam and this is, this is the part called the Book of Knowledge. The beginning of it. Well worth a read and reflecting upon. It's not for non, not not for nothing that Imam Ghazali and his Iyyahulam Adin are regarded as really central to Islamic scholarship, and that's pretty much across all Sunni schools. Read, learn. I hope you found that beneficial and um, useful. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on Monday. I'll be back at the chaplaincy on Monday, inshallah, for my uh, weekly sobet and my weekly zikr. Uh, if you want to join me at the University of Birmingham Multifaith Chaplaincy at 6 p.m., you are certainly most welcome. And uh, if not, then you can join me online. I wish you all a very good evening if you're in the UK and have a wonderful weekend. And wherever you are in the world, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah be with you all.